Yeah, I can do the chat before I actually go live. The chat opens up right away. Yeah, I don't think it's related. <laughs> Yeah, we got five people right now. So can you, is it, is it working right now any better or is it still buffering? Because I, um, I uh, updated Chrome, which is what I use to do this. Um, basically go to, go to YouTube and uh, there's a icon in the upper right. Um, we got 10 people on now. Hopefully people can hear 13. We'll see. <clears throat> Here we go. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and so I uh, I up, updated Chrome, and like I said, that's what I use to do this. Okay, so far so good. Thanks, Tom. I don't know if you were on earlier, but yeah, this is the third time <laughs> I've done this. This is the third time I've rebooted. <laughs> Verdi, yeah, things fall apart. And one thing I did was I deleted those other the two previous ones because what happened when I did this before? We this has happened before, and I restarted everything. People kept going to the old one and watching that, and then it would just stop, and it's like, oh, it's not going to work. So, um, Bob, good. I'm glad. Kathy's on her way. <laughs> Pepper and Kathy are texting each other. They're like, so no no worries. Okay, I'm glad. Uh, I, I tested right now. So I updated Chrome, which is what I use to do this. Um, Safari doesn't support it, I don't think. Um, so I couldn't do these live streams on Safari. I had to use Chrome. Um, yeah, so DK, you haven't missed anything. <laughs> we haven't done squat. Man, I'm not going to get out of here until five tonight at this rate. <laughs> it's so bad. I feel bad because normally we have, we, right now we have 15. So normally we would have about 30 or 40 by now. So it's it might be tough to, to get people uh, to trust it. Uh, and I don't blame you. You've got better things to do than sit here and watch me be frustrated with my internet speeds. Uh, that's fine. Don't worry about, oh, good. I'm glad you're doing your guitar class. That's awesome. I'm glad you're supporting your local guitar teacher. Uh, that's a big thing for me. So I was, I was the local guitar teacher for a long time. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, we can get right to this. And uh, like I said before, I think it was Deej, um, who's not on here yet. Uh, and I think he was the one that said he was like 17 years old or something like that. A couple of them, he uh, he went to one of my videos of one of the live streams and he said, hey, the video starts at like nine minutes or whatever. The lesson starts at nine minutes. Anyone wants to do that uh, with these live streams? Uh, anyone makes note of that? It doesn't offend me at all because I know that I'm, uh, A, I know I talk a little bit. Usually on the videos that I post and create, um, uh, the videos that I, uh, that, that I create and post, um, uh, those, you know, I, if I'm saying something at the front end of that, it's usually a setup and I feel like it's somewhat important, but I understand. I think someone posted the other day that my big video, like the lesson starts at two twenty or something, which is pretty good. Two minutes of me going off, uh, setting up the lesson is not too bad, but in this context, oftentimes I'm talking to you guys and we're just kind of getting, waiting for people to show up. So normally, um, the lesson won't start until about 10 minutes in or sometimes even 15 minutes in. Um, so, yeah. Oh, that, I can show that. I am naturally chatty. That's my personality. Oh, okay. Um, I am naturally chatty. And um, um, so that's just, that's just kind of where it is. And also, <laughs> if I weren't chatty, it would be really hard to do a, a live stream on YouTube. So this kind of plays to that. So, so far, no buffering. That's good. That's awesome. So it was on my end, whatever it was. I called uh, Spectrum. It's Spectrum. They bought Charter. I called Spectrum and they uh, said a 45-minute wait. And I went like, nah, not going to do that. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and do things on my end at what I can. So I unplugged my router and my Wi-Fi and plugged it back in. I rebooted my computer. I think the thing that may have done it was re uh, up, uh, uh, updating Chrome, which may help in the future for tomorrow and the next day and so forth. Um, I just did. So I'm doing a, a spectrum speed test right now. And I'm going to tell you what I get because, and then we're going to go, we're going to start the lesson. So, and Kathy, it may be a, a fairly quick one. So maybe you can make your, your other lesson. Yeah, so we're looking at 100, 112 megabytes. I was 250 earlier, so 
Uh, but this is actually from Spectrum. And this is not bad too. If I test it with Spectrum, they, if, there, if there's a problem, then, you know, if they see bad numbers, then they might deal with it too. Now, see, now I'm getting six megabytes upload, seven megabytes, eight, nine, 10. I looked it up. It said 3.5, good enough for live stream. So 9.7 is what I've got now. So uh, yeah, right, <laughs> pay my cable bill. Exactly. Um, I have, uh, yeah, I, I pay extra for the business um, charter. So, oh, so what we're going to do, it, it's going to require some rewriting stuff out, but I don't think we need to rewrite out this. All right. Oh, discovered. Dang it. Yeah, yeah. Spectrums can be a pain. I mean, they'll call you back so you don't have to wait on hold, which I love that new feature. Um, but so this is if you want to do a screenshot, if 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 it bu actually buffering makes it easier to do a screenshot, right? Get some more light on there. This is what we did the second day of the chord theory stuff. Weird. It buffered as I went up. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I'll I'll close that window. I'll also close. I'll quit Safari. Don't need to have that open. And then, um, well, that one doesn't. That's not going to affect anything. So, just in case. Um, what, what am I watching on? Oh, Jeff. Oh, sorry. Where's Jeff? I didn't see. Where's Jeff? So you guys actually, um, yeah, we'll get this. We got 23 people on now. So, so anyway, this is what we did the, the second day. So what we did was, uh, this was the second day of chord theory, which was lesson. Was that, uh, let's see, we stopped to do. I don't know. I'm losing track now. <laughs> so, um, and then, so this, we wrote two octaves C scale and, and this is, this is today is really the day where this is really going to come in handy. But um, then we did, um, uh, we wrote out um, C, four note chords starting on each. We wrote out the C scale one octave right here vertically. And we wrote, and we only really needed to do it there. Um, and then we just went up a third for each of these and came up with seventh chord. So a seventh chord has four notes. A triad makes sense. It has three notes. A seventh chord has four notes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so it's weird we're having issues. Um, hey, Gary, uh, it's weird we're having issues. The the thing I want, what I'm concerned about is, is the issue going to be on the video when it's posted? Uh, hopefully not, but I'll watch it and see, I'll watch some of it and see once it, once we're done, because once we're done, I, I post it and I can edit, I can cut out all this beginning stuff if we don't want to talk about this, but cause it's kind of very uninteresting, but I'm glad it's looking good there, Verdi, Verdi. Okay. So then, you know, we did all that. So we're going to do this again. So we're going to write out a C scale for two octaves and the number one through 15 on a new piece of paper. We don't need to do this because we, we we know what a major third and a minor third is. So we don't necessarily need to do that. But then what we're going to do is we're going to write out five notes. We're going to write out a, um, one third, another third, another third, and then the next third. So the third after B would be D. So so a C ninth chord or C in this case, it's going to be C major ninth would be C, E, G, B, D. So we're going to write that. So I'm going to get a clean piece of paper. Kathy, we work fast so you can get to your lesson. And then if I have an idea for a story, then Diane. <laughs> Dang it, Bruce, it's buffering. That bums me out. So two octave C scale. C, and I got my the mic set right. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Put the carrots over E and F and B and C. So we, we remember that those are half steps, okay? And then underneath, we can write the one through 15. I'm gonna use a smaller pen, I think, for that. And then in writing this, you can see that where the origin of ninth chords and 11th chords and seventh chords and all that comes from, because it's like, oh, there's the 11th, oh, there's the 
There's the 13th. And remember, we had we were talking about intervals like a tenth and even twelfths, which is a fifth and an octave. Uh, though you can even see that in in the, so now this is what I've written so far, and people are logging off I think because of issues. Okay, so that's what we're going to route, and then we're going to do the same thing again. We just just write the C scale vertically. Oh, uh, well when I when I finish this. I think even now people can start in and back up, right? You guys can back up in this video if you want. So if people start watching now. So I'm going to write C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C vertically like that, okay? Yeah, C... Yes, essentially, yes. C sus two. If you were to apply the same sus four, you know, you take the three to four, um, and you take the one to two. Um, you could also say a sus could be going backwards, like you could take the three down to two. But um, anyway, okay, that's good. So I both basically just wrote the thing there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up a third to E. So see, it's going to be C E up a third to G up a third to B and up another third. These are, if you skip a note, that's a third. If you go to the next note, that's a second. This would be a major second, major second, and then a half step is called a minor second. Another whole step, that's a major second. So a whole step is the same as a major second and half step is the same as a minor second. No quiz on that, so don't worry. If you don't understand it right now, that's fine. The 10th time I say that, you'll be like, oh, of course, whole step is a major second. <laughs> you'll understand that, okay? But we have two different kinds of minor thirds, or major. Or we have two different kinds of thirds: a major third and a minor third uh, that occur naturally in a C major scale. And so here's what we're going to do: we're going to write C, E, G, B, and D, and that's a ninth chord. And above that, I'm going to write root R, just R for root, three, five, seven, nine. Okay. All right, I touched my face. Drinking game, if I touch my face, <laughs> if I refer to myself in the third person, if I say I had abandoned high school called, or if I pick up a guitar and I don't realize it's in open tuning, uh, those are all times when we would take a drink, okay? And the light's on, so that's, and you get a freebie to start. Except Verdi, because he's drinking beer. <laughs> so... There you can see the makings of a ninth chord, okay? So because we're having issues today, I'm gonna to probably just, we're just gonna do this page. We're not gonna learn the shapes. We're gonna move that to tomorrow, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll teach you some uh, in, in the A form like we did before. When we did all those C chords um, here, let's see, where are the, well, I've got so much paper now that, oh, here, these, perfect. I found this really fast. So I'm gonna show you some, some ninth versions of these, all right? So, we had seven seventh chords, right? C major seven in the key of C naturally occurring. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, and then we had B minor seven sharp, uh, flat five. Um, if you wanna take a picture of that, that was from that lesson, the seventh, le seventh chords. And we also did this in the key of G and we learned new shapes there. Uh, so all of these shapes are movable. You've got, see, this shape is the same as this shape, and then these three are the same. You have basically one, two, uh, I'm sorry, uh, three and four. You have four shapes times 12 frets, so that's 48 chords, okay? Um. <laughs> yes. If I say, dang it, buffering, then, I'm, th yeah, it's so funny. Also, um, uh, just so you know, Kathy, all of the uh, previous live streams are all monetized now. There are, not, there are, no, there are no ad restrictions on them. So um, you wanted, did you need, to, I'm not sure, we'll have to talk uh, about what, what you needed. I forget the link we talked about me sending you. Um, but, oh, I know what it was, the links to the, 
Okay, right, right. The links to the start of each section. People can find that out themselves, I think. So we're pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to tell you something. We are going to create seven ninth chords here. We're going to have seven different ninth chords, but two of them are never used, okay? Um, two of them you would never use. So we're going to have, I mean, I've just never seen them used. Um, or you might call them something else. We might not call them a ninth chord. Okay, so now we can we can go through here. C to E is a whole step. I mean, a major third. Sorry. So we're going to start with a capital M. All right. E to G is minor. G to B is major. And B to D is minor. So major, minor, major, minor is the formula. And you don't have to memorize this. Okay, it's not critical. Um, is a formula for a major ninth chord. So that'd be a triangle nine. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah, normally I, Diet Coke would be, you know, probably my second choice after coffee. Um, good, Bruce. Finally. Hey, Pepe, we've been having problems all day with the with the internet. So I had to reboot twice. This is the third restart of the stream. So I only have 24 people. So it's pretty small. I think people were like, eh, I don't want to watch Tom today. It's not worth it. <coughs> oh, you got some tea going on. Nice. Okay. So, so that's that's one of the uh that's a very usable chord. Now, a major ninth. Is, is a we can and we'll learn it tomorrow. A major ninth is you could totally sub for a major seventh, uh, and vice versa. If, you, if the song says major ninth and you don't know how to play it, you can always just play a major seventh, that'll work. Um, so just so you know, but a major ninth almost always works if you want to get a, even a bigger chord sound, um, than uh, than the um, uh, than the seventh. Okay, so now I'm going to take the D chord and I'm going to go up. And I'm not going to wait for you. I'm not going to do so much interaction here because we're just, our stream is pretty, pretty lame for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and write this out, but I'm basically going to go up a third. So up a third from D, skip E and go to F, skip G and go to A, skip B and go to C, and then skip D and go to E. And that is the next one. So it's going to be D, F, A, C, E. And if you feel like you want to be the teacher's pet, you can always go ahead and write out the next one if you want. You can get ahead and I can tell you if you're right. But go ahead and write all four, all, all five notes. Okay, we have the root. These are the thirds of the chord. These are the fifths of the chords. These are the sevenths and these are the ninths of the chord. Okay, now analyzing that we have minor major. So it's a minor triad and minor. So we know that this is minor major minor is a, is a minor seventh, if we remember. And then the last interval C to E is a major. So, and this is a minor ninth. And minor ninths are great. I mean, I love the sound of a minor ninth. I'll play you some so you can hear them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys just leave the chat up and you guys can have fun amongst yourselves. We have to cr create a chat group. Um, okay. Now the next one, starting on E, if we go up E to G, G to B, E, G, B is a minor triad. Then we add the D and that's a minor seventh. And then we go from D up a third, we get F, okay? Well, here's one of the ones that we're never going to use. I have never been, it would technically be, so if I went E, G, B, D, and F, that would be minor, major, minor, like a regular minor seven, and then minor. And that would be a minor seven flat nine. I've really never, ever seen that chord, ever, ever seen that chord. So that, that one is what we would call, I would call theoretical, okay? It occurs, it happens within the context of what we're doing here, uh, but it's not one we would ever use. Every good boy deserves favor. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So like, for example, E minor, uh, it's just not a chord I would ever use. There's no reason. If you want this sound, that's basically a... Um, that's basically a G7. So E minor seven flat nine is kind of like G7 over E, which you would never use. It's just not a chord we would ever play. Okay. D minor ninth, however, here's C major. Uh, here's C major ninth. 
your C major seven, your C major nine. And you'll notice I'm only playing four notes. I'm playing four notes. And yet a ninth chord is, is a five note chord. So this is where we get into, because when we're playing, a lot of times we use a thumb and four fingers, we can only play four notes. We start eliminating notes. What's the least important note? This is, this is real important here. This there will be a quiz on. The fifth is not very important. The, unless we're talking about a flat five chord, if the five is referenced in the name of the chord, like G minor seven flat five, then you need to have the flat five. I mean, you need to have the five in there, which is flatted. If it's not referenced at all, it's usually just a pop. Remember when we did the, the we uh, harmonized the G scale? There was only one that was a, a flatted fifth. All of the rest of them were just power chords. And so that's kind of assumed. So you don't need the fifth. So that's the first one you can get rid of. So really in this chord, I have root, third, seventh, and ninth. Okay, I need the ninth because we're calling it a ninth chord. If it's if it says C major ninth, we need a ninth. The major refers to the seventh. So we need the seventh and it's a major triad. So we, we need to have the third in there. So those are the important tones. We don't even need the root. If you have, if you're playing with a bass player, a lot of times when I'm playing with a bass player in a jazz context, the, I can ignore the root. So when I get to 11th chords or 13th chords, that's one of the least valuable notes. So get rid of the fifth, and then you can get rid of the, um, you can get rid of the root if you're playing with a bass player. If you're not playing with a bass player and you need, you need a 13th chord, you're probably going to want want the root. Okay, that's a 13th chord, for example. Uh, but the ninth chord, we're going to learn these tomorrow. We're going to learn some ninth chords. Um, I'll probably show them to you here and also on the on the um, on the on the with the bass note on the bottom string. Okay, and but it's a beautiful minor ninth is a beautiful chord, but that that's an E minor. That would be an E. Uh, sorry, E minor seven flat nine. I, it's not bad, but I've never been asked to use that. So, and so, and then the next one is going to be an F major ninth also. So we're going to go F up a third to A. I'm going to hold this up closer for you in a second. A, C, E, and G. And you can see we have an A minor seven chord here. We have a C triad there. We have an F triad here. So for you jazzers, like Larry Carlton would do this a lot where he would play triads and so he would superimpose triads so he would play a c triad over a, an f chord and it would create this major ninth sound kind of a really cool thing so there here let me hold this up so far and i'm going to put a little i'm going to put our little parentheses around the e one just just to kind of highlight the fact that this is more just a theoretical thing and it's probably not going to be one we would use okay so the formula for the the f to a is major a, C is minor, C, E is major, and E, G is minor. It's exactly the same as the, as the C. It's exact same analysis, major, minor, major, minor, major, minor, major, minor. Okay, very good. Yay. No, Pepper, you were so close. You were so close. C to E is a major third, and the other way, E to G is minor. Dyslexia. Oh, question from Jeff. How can you tell what chord is without the root? Um, well, if the bass player is playing the root, um, if the bass player is playing the root, then that'll be the root. And in jazz, the bass player is probably not going to sit on the root very long. He's going to move around. Um, but basically you just kind of reverse engineer. So if, if I were playing, like if, if I heard this chord, And, and it, Jeff, Jeff, this is just an example. If I heard this chord or saw someone play this chord, um, that's really the, that's kind of a, like an A, um, it's an A13 chord, but there's no A in it. Um, and the reason I might determine that it was an A13 chord was because the bass player. Okay, <laughs> let's say I'm watching. Um, so, I, if the bass were playing an A, then I would know this was an A13. If there was no bass, I could assume a couple different chords. I could assume A13s, or I could also assume E flat, 
seven sharp, nine sharp, five. Okay, that would be another voicing. So if I don't know what the root is, it could be one of basically, in this case, two chords or this one. Okay, but that's pretty much all it could be. So I could rule it out. Um, and if, as I started to decipher, you know, go G, C sharp, F sharp, A, B. Okay. Um, you know, you can start to go, well, okay, here's our third. Here, this is the seventh. Okay, if that's the third, then the root is so and so forth. Um, Pepper, you're close. Pepper, you're close. The first interval is wrong. But I love that you're working ahead on this. And I think Kathy's gone. Oh, no, not yet. Yep. So uh, the next one is G, B, D, F, and A. And that would be major, let's see, major, minor, minor, major. And that's just a ninth chord. That would just be called G ninth. Okay. And that is a very, very common. I need to get a cleaner sound. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me see if I can clean this up. Um, oh, that's part of the reason. It should still fairly be fairly clean. I'm not bad. The guitar is a little thwacky sounding. Um, let me turn the reverb. Oh, that's not that high. Weird. All right. So I'm turning down the reverb. Okay, but this is a G9 chord. You've heard it a million times, but you're probably like, when? I feel good. That's what the horn players are doing. They're going, I think they're, it's an E maybe. The horn players are literally playing like an E9 chord, and then they're going down to E flat 9 and back to E9. They're all just going, like the trumpet is going there, and another trumpet. Too. And then the, the alto sax is here, and the tenor sax is here. And the berry sax is here, and it sounds like this. It's cool. Is it, horn arrangements can sometimes be that easy. I love it. But that's basically a ninth chord. So a ninth ninth chord has a dominant seventh in it. It's a, it's a it's it, in this case a G seven, the ninth on top, and the A on top. Okay. So that one is very very common. So we're so we have so far of the five we've done so far, we have four that are totally usable. Okay. The next one, A. Somebody already up on that? Dang it, I'm so sorry it's buffering. Um, this, yeah, this is the right pen. We go A, up a third to C, up a third to, oh, we're up to 31, that's not bad, up to E, up a third to G, and up a third to B. And if we were analyze it, it would be A to C is a minor third, so small m. C to E is a major third, so capital M. E to G is a minor third, so small m. And G to B is a major third, so capital M. It's the exact same formula as the D minor ninth. So this is just another minor ninth. Um, and uh, and so, so what, so again, what a ninth chord, the big, the big thing I want you to see is we were talking, if we didn't have a seventh here, if we didn't play a seventh in any of these, these would all be two chords. C2, D minor two, E minor two, F2, G2, A minor two. Okay? Uh, but because we have the seventh in there, now we can go one, three, five, seven, nine. A nine chord requires that you have all of these notes here. Of course, like I said, when we start to run out of fingers, we start to have to start eliminating notes. And the first note to go is the fifth, because you don't really need the fifth most of the time. Hey, Dennis. <laughs> That's all right. You can go back and watch. I, I'm so sorry. I wish I knew it was. I wish it was something I could fix. I hate not being able to fix things. Typical man, right? <laughs> I just want you to listen to me. I don't need you to fix anything. <laughs> but in this case, you can't listen to me if I can't fix. So, or I can't listen to. You. Well, I, I, I'm not listening to you anyway. So, our relationship is totally jacked up. Okay, so here's what we have so far. And tomorrow I'm going to show you some ninth chords, uh, but I'm going to keep this pretty short and sweet because it's already 12, 15 here. So, all right. Um, and then the next one was the minor seven flat five one. And this is another one that we will never use. 
I've never been asked to play a minor seven flat five with a flat nine. I just, it's never, it's never happened. I accidentally touched my face. So if you're just joining us for the first time, we have a drinking game. If I touch my face, which we're not supposed to do in the coronavirus era. If I refer to myself in the third person, which Tom never does. Um, and if I uh, say I had abandoned high school called something and uh Yes, Pat, Pepper, you're right on the G. That's the ninth one. Very good. Very good. Uh, let's see. No, you're, you're getting your majors and minors mixed up, Pepper, on the. So the B1, the B1 is going to be, and it, this one is one we, oh, <laughs> no, I'm wearing, <laughs> I'm wearing pants. <laughs> I'm wearing pants. It, it's warm today. We went for a walk and it was very warm today, which I'm so happy. So the, the B1, B, D, F, A, C. It's not one we'll ever use. Technically, you would call that a B minor, seven, flat, five, flat, nine. I mean, I just wouldn't. I, I, I've never seen that. I've never seen that chord before. Oh, right. If I use air quotes. That's right. We have a fifth rule. Who's going to keep track of this? I need a post-it note right here to keep track of all the rules. I forgot. So we have five rules. Oh, and then we, you, I, I didn't tell you the fourth one. So the first one was, uh, if I touch my face, if I refer to myself in the third person, if I say I had a band in high school called something, if I pick up a guitar and don't realize it's an open tuning, which I, I, I'm betting that I never do again. Or if I ever use air quotes. And I always love to say air quotes, you know, in air quotes. So, hey, Dennis, thank you so much. Uh, don't worry. Come back later. Uh, let's see. Nice. Tea. Uh, let's see. Herbal tea, that's a good thing to go do. Um, what am I sipping, by the way? Oh, sorry. I am sipping Starbucks. Yeah, I, I sicking, I'm sipping Starbucks. So, and I I went for a walk the other day with a friend, and it was a long walk. And he has this path from his house that it's amazing. I don't know how he did it, but he found, he got all the way from his house to the duck pound duck ponds at uh, Cal State Northridge. And we were never in, on any major streets. It was all neighborhoods. It was pretty cool. Uh, so we want you know, and it took like an hour and a half to do the full walk. And we got back to his house, and I still had coffee left. And he goes. How did you make your coffee last an hour and a half? I just, I just do. Cause I like it. A, I like it colder. And also B, I like to know that I'm going to have it around noon, which it's noon now. So, okay. So the major minors for the, for B, and I'm going to, let me catch up here. I've got to write it out here. I, I wrote it on there, but I didn't write it here. So it would be B, up a third is D, up a third is F, up a third is A, and up a third is C. It's going to be minor, minor, major, minor. And that's, like I said, a minor seven with a flat five and a flat nine. And we put like parentheses around that because it doesn't really ever, I've never been asked to play that chord. I mean, it might sound cool in an orchestral context, I think. Um, let's see. Let me see what that sounds like in an orchestra. Uh, well, here's piano. Um, you know, it would be basically... I could see where maybe um, let me yeah let's see let's do like some cellos or something. Um, where are we here? I need here. Oh, I could let me just do strings. Where are they? Oh, here studio strings, uh, orchestral strings. Where are here smart strings? I mean, that's kind of weird, but if I spread it out a little bit so that it wasn't all, um, oh. I mean, I could see where you could use that in maybe a classical context, but um, uh, let's see. Yeah, when I when I'm saying a 
third, I would probably, a AJ, I would probably write it out this way. Yeah. So seventh chord that comprised of every other note. So um, again, just to kind of, just to kind of give you, uh, and I, and we can talk about interval theory too a little bit. Um, it, it's part of chord theory, but he, let me give you an, a quick interval theory lesson here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's probably <laughs> inappropriate, Dennis. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if my, they'll let me, uh, I don't know if I can delete that later or not. Maybe delete your own comment just so it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't cause any problems later. But so starting at C, C to D is a, a major second. C to E is a major, because we're talking about major scale here. C to D is a major second. C to E is a major third. C to F is what's called a perfect fourth. C to G is a perfect fourth. I'm fifth, sorry. C to G is a perfect fifth. So this is a second. This is a third. This is a fourth. This is a fifth. And then C to A is a major sixth. And C to B is a major seventh. And then C to C up here an is a perfect octave, P8. So the way you could write that is capital M2, capital M3, capital or P4, capital P5, capital M6, capital M7, and capital P6. No quiz on any of this, okay? This is not a must-need-to-know kind of thing. Yeah, no offense, Dennis. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just want to be careful because there's certain things that trigger. Uh... <laughs> well, now, see, that word is also going to trigger. You got to be careful. I, I know it's, it's fun, it sounds funny, but the people at YouTube are pretty puritanical. <laughs> yeah, it's – well, and here's the thing. If you go from – so C, okay, check this out. Now here again, we're getting into music, music, this is music theory stuff, not high level music theory. This is like first week of class music theory, okay? There's called inversions. So C to D is a major second, okay? D up to C is a minor seventh. So a major interval, the inner an inversion. C to D is a, an interval. The inversion of that interval is D to C, all the way back up to C. Okay. So C to D is a major third. The inversion of that is a minor seventh. And one way you can do it is you can go, if it's a major interval, the inver inversion is going to be minor. And the two numbers are going to have to have to add up to nine. That's how I remembered it in school. So for example, C to E is a major third. Yes, the six is the relative of the of the one. C to, uh, but we're th that's talking about chords. That would be triads. Like you could do E minor triad as a substitute for G major, um, or in this case, A minor triad would be the sub the the uh, relative minor to C to C. So C to E is a major third. Okay, like I said, the inversion of C to E is E up to C, not C, E down this way, because E down to C is still a major third. That doesn't matter. C to E and E down to C, is they're both major thirds. And I know I'm losing some of you on this. Don't worry, no quiz on this. C, But E to C is a minor sixth, okay? C to E is a major third, major. The inversion, since it's major, is gonna be minor and it has to add up to nine. So the inversion of a major third is gonna be a minor sixth. Does that make sense? Um, not necessarily though, uh, because that, that doesn't apply to the minor scale. Um, if we were to look at an A minor scale, which start A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the first inversion or the first interval in the A minor scale is a major second still. So it doesn't necessarily play out that way in a sense, it just works out that way with a major scale, okay? That each one of these is, a a major. Now, however, when we go C to F, remember that was a perfect fourth. Okay. F to C is a perfect fifth. So I'm not sure why they call it perfect. I don't know why they see here's here's why. Um, this is probably why they call it perfect fifth. Because if you if you called C to F a major fourth, then you go, oh, then F to C would be a minor fifth. And it's like, no, it's it's a perfect interval, you know, it's it fits, it's already in there. So that one's a little weird, but that's what it is. So the inversion of a perfect fourth is a perfect fifth. And then of course, when you go to the C to G, 
that's a perfect fifth. And the inversion of that C to, or G to C is a perfect fourth. So I know I'm confusing you, um, but that's that's the trick. And so, like I said, I always did the thing where, okay, if it's a major interval, then the inversion is going to be minor. And then the two numbers have to add up to nine. So let's do that again with here. we got a major sixth coming up. C to A is a major sixth. A to C is a minor third. The inversion of, of a major sixth is a minor third. Again, we have the major and the inversion is a minor. And we had six and we need it to add up to nine. So therefore we have um, uh, a major, uh, I'm sorry, a minor third. My brain just stopped. Squirrel. <laughs> well, how do we say squirrel in French? I think, Ka oh, Kathy, you're still there. Oh, God bless you, Kathy, for rewatching. <laughs> Kathy's the reason I make a million dollars a month on YouTube. <laughs> okay. And the last one, C to B is a major seventh. And we've talked about major sevenths. And B to C is a half step, a minor second, right? So C to B is a major, capital M, seven. Uh, B to C is a minor second. So we, two, seven plus two equals nine. And we have a major and a minor. Now, here's an interesting one. C to C is a perfect octave. Well, okay, how do you do C? <laughs> C to C? Well, that's only eight. How's it going to add up to nine? Aha, you thought you had me, but you don't. All right, there's something called we haven't talked about, but C to C, if we were to play, and that's a little tough here, but if I, well, I could do it. Oh, I got to go back. It's going to be really loud. Watch this. It's going to be super loud. Now, oh, turn it down. Okay. I had it turned up for the strings. All right, where are you? There you are. Okay. C to C is called a perfect unison. You could call it P1 or P P U, I guess. But P1 is a perfect unison. Okay. So P1 would be the first interval, then a major second, then a major third, then a perfect fourth, then a perfect fifth, then a major sixth, major seventh. And a perfect eight would be our octave. That's how you would kind of you could think of it that way. So, so the answer to that C to C is a perfect octave. There's your eight, and then C to C is a unison, so that's one. So eight plus one is nine. So we still end up with nine. <laughs> yes. So Squirrel meme is from uh, Disney. Uh, it's from Up, the movie Up, right? Am I right there? With the dog, he's like having a con because the dog talks. He has a talk box on, he, and he talks to them. It's such a great movie. Walter, if you're the, I don't think Walter's here, but Walter played on it. Um, is talking, and then all of a sudden he goes squirrel, like dogs have a one. That's what they're referring to. <laughs> That's me. I'm like, oh, wait, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, so that squirrel meme. And it applies to anyone who has a short attention span. So if I were to do... Uh, the major scale maybe harmonizes with major ninths. Again, this one doesn't really, it's not bad. And then this one, oh, I don't even know. Like I said, I've never been asked to play this one. Or it could be, no, there's no third in that one. I can't get rid of the fifth because it has, it's a flat five. But my point being um, that. Um, there's a couple chords as we harmonize the ninth um, chord, we get to the ninth, um, that uh, you probably would never, never use, even though they occur naturally. All right. And that, like I said, it's the, we have C major ninth, D minor ninth, we have E minor seven flat five, not going to, not going to be a common one, F major ninth, G ninth, and an A minor ninth. Those are the five that we're probably going to see. All right. So I can write that here too. So, oh, that's fine. C major nine, 
D minor ninth, uh, F major nine, G nine, and an A minor ninth. Those are the the five chords in that harmonization that we'll actually use. All right. So, um, hey, Deej is back. Pixar's, uh, Cars is great. Deej, thank you the other day uh, for saying, um, uh, to, to, for saying that when the <laughs> lesson started, that's not, that doesn't offend me, especially on the live streams, uh, because it'll be a good 10 to 15 minutes before I actually start teaching just because I'm waiting for everybody to show up. So I, I do that. So if you did, I don't know if you noticed, but I think you were the one that posted, Hey, the, the lesson starts at nine minutes or something like that. I actually pinned that comment so that it was at the top for everybody to take advantage of. Cause what Deej did was he created a, um, a link that took you, took you immediately to that moment in the video, which is great. Actually it's a great time saver. And I think actually it will help me get more, more views on some of these lessons because it's difficult. And so if anybody else wants to do that, feel free and then I'll pin it. Uh, that would help. So Kathy, okay, I have to go log off. See you tomorrow, Kathy. Hopefully I'll have a better connection. We appreciate you. And we're glad you're doing okay. And and uh, hopefully it'll start warming up. I'll have to put Michigan weather on my phone so I know what the weather's like where you are. Uh, today we're hitting 78, 76. I mean, I, I was hot in, in a, a shirt today. So I'm on our walk. Hey, Jim Cavell. <laughs> yeah, everybody's invited to in and out Oh, I forgot about that, Jim. No, I'm just kidding, Jim. I didn't forget. That's my next stop. I, I'm going to hit one on the way, though. I'm going to find which the one's closest north of you so I can hit it on the way. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. I did a – yeah, no, DJ, DJ, I totally appreciate that. Um, I think sometimes when people do that to my videos, they think they're being snarky or like this guy talks too much. I do talk too much. <laughs> I admit it. So I really appreciate when someone puts a timestamp up there so that I, I'll pin that tweet. I'll, I'm not tweet. I'll pin that um, that comment because it really does save people, people that might get frustrated with my personality, but they still want to learn what I have to say. They actually appreciate that. <laughs> okay, So I admit it. Um, let's see. Yeah, Jim, we had a problem with buffering. This is the third time I had to restart this lesson. So uh, because I, I had buffering issues uh, right now, I'm not sure. Hopefully everybody's better. Ab, you were one of the first to uh, actually. Um, oh, you posted the timestamp on the most videos. Thank you. Uh, I don't I don't remember that, but I'll, I'm going to go back and look for those. And then I'll 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 uh, start doing that. <laughs> Ab. Yeah, I, I remember that. I think I did. Um, I'm just talking about. I think Deej did this yesterday on what? Yeah, you did that yesterday on one of the on the video. So, Ab, I'm going to go back and I may have pinned your comment, but it just occurred to me yesterday to start doing that because I think it actually really helps people. Um, if that comments at the top, it'll save people some uh, time. So, okay, uh, let's see. You like the chat, David? <laughs> well, I hope so. This is so funny. It's all one way, you know. I. I because I'm kind of a chatty person anyway, it, it's not, it's fairly natural for me. I, I have friends that they couldn't do this because in fact, I remember, I don't know if you know who Tommy Walker is, but Tommy, uh, Tommy's a really, really great worship leader and great worship music songwriter. And he has a church in Eagle Rock. Oh, I can tell you guys a story. Uh, Kathy, you're going to have to watch this later. She's gone. Uh, where's, where's, uh, um, I'll tell this story and then I'm going to head to in and out for Jim because uh, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I haven't, I didn't eat breakfast because I knew I was going to have in and out. Uh, where is Diane? Are you there, Diane? Because I've got a story for you. But anyway, Tommy, uh, this is not the story. But I would when I was teaching Maranatha clinics, um, uh, I was traveling around the country doing these clinics and it was 97, 98, 99. And I think it was like 1998 or whatever. They I, I did one in Sacramento and they flew Tommy Walker up to Sacramento um, to watch me teach a clinic. I had to teach a, a guitar, a acoustic guitar clinic, an electric guitar clinic. And, and she was on earlier, but maybe she's not, she didn't make this one. She'll have to watch. I did a, a uh, an acoustic guitar clinic an electric guitar clinic, and then we did a band clinic. So I did like an hour and a half acoustic class, an hour and a half electric class, and we broke for lunch. 
And then we got the all the musicians together in the big room and we did a clinic with the band. So it was the usually kick or kick the drummer, bass player, me and the keyboard player. <clears throat> so and the four of us would do a clinic for all the musicians and that would last like an hour and a half and or maybe longer. And then we would do a closing clinic. I don't know if any of you ever went to one of those clinics. Uh, some of my early YouTube followers were people that actually went to my clinics back in the 90s. So I, um, uh, so Tommy, they flew Tommy up to see me teach my clinic. And that was a little weird because I'm thinking, well, Tommy was already on staff with Maranatha. He was with one of their big worship leaders. He was doing promise keep. He's already doing a lot. And I was kind of thinking, oh, shoot, they're, they're bringing him up, up there so he can see what I do so he can take my job. And I'm like, why? You know, why would they do that? Because I was, I was, as far as I know, I had great reviews. In fact, the, the vice president of Maranatha pulled me aside uh, at the end of the third year and ironically and told me I had the best reviews of all the teachers. And, uh, and, and, he, and then the next year I wasn't doing it. And I'm like, well, what happened there? But then the, the year after that, they stopped doing them all together. So I think they were just cutting back. Um, and I didn't have the pedigree of some of the other guitar players at the time. Um, and so Tommy sat through both of my clinics. So he's sitting in the back and I'm teaching my clinic and it didn't really bother me. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. It didn't make me nervous, but I just thought it was a little weird. And then we had lunch together and he sat down with me and he goes, dude, I could never do what you do. And I was like, yeah, Tommy is like the quietest, shyest guy. I mean, he barely says a word when you, have to, when you talk to him. And I told him this story and this is a story for Diane that she's, I, I don't see Diane. Was she ever on? Oh, you, oh, Bruce, did you already scroll through and to see if Diane's anywhere on there? Uh, boy, it's hard. There's so many, so many comments. So the, I've known Tommy for, I was leading worship in Eagle Rock, California, and he was leading worship just down the street. Um, and, uh, okay, bye, bye, Ab. No worries. Oh, shoot. Is the video quality going down again? I'm, I have to remember to check and see if it looks nasty on the. Um, oh, OK. Uh, well, Dennis, help me set up the discord thing. Maybe we'll talk about that later. OK. Um, oh, OK. I think she said she'd watch later after the buffering. OK, that makes sense. So. So the first year I was doing Maranatha stuff, they rented a giant rehearsal studio with, that had like 10 big rooms in it. And we all went to different, we, all the bands, we had like three Promise Keeper bands and three workshop bands. And then they had another band for something else. And we all had our own rooms and we're rehearsing. And while we did that, it was down in Orange County. They put us up at the Double Tree down in, in Orange County, down in, I think it was uh, Irvine. And so I, I told Beth, I said, hey, you should come down. I'll leave the keys at the I'll leave the keys at the desk. And you should come down. And while I'm rehearsing, you can take the kids to go swimming in the pool because it was a heated pool and they had jacuzzi and everything. And this was like April. So it was kind of cold. Our pool back at the building was too cold to swim in. So she drove all the way down to Orange County. Um, and she got the key. And she and she went out, you know, to got the kids changed, went down to the pool and she's sitting by the pool and she she was pregnant with Emma out to here. And um, we had the two boys and the two boys would have been probably like five and three. And. Um, so. Um, so I uh, so the boys were swimming in the pool and there was another lady, another blonde lady over on the other side of the pool. And she was pregnant out to here and she had two boys, five and three that were playing in the pool. <laughs> so it was like, OK, well, of course, what happens is the boys start playing together. And then, of course, the other mom walked over to Beth and they sat down, and they started talking and they go, oh, wow. You know, they start, oh, you know, our kids are boy. They, are they having fun? You know, and so. You know, identical, like the kid, the boys were the same age and the, both the women were pregnant. And uh, this lady, this other lady was from Illinois and Beth is from Indiana. And she goes, oh, well, you know, so why are you here? Are you, are you out of state? And she goes, oh, no, my husband, 
works for Maranatha. And, and, uh, and, and the other lady said, really, your husband, works? oh, my husband works for Maranatha too. And, and she goes, well, what's your husband doing? And my wife said, well, he's a guitar player. And the other lady says, really? Mine's a guitar player too. And, and, and Beth adds, oh, she, he's also a worship leader. Oh, mine's also a worship leader. And it's like, where does he lead worship? Oh, my husband leads worship in Eagle Rock. And Beth is like, my husband leads worship in Eagle Rock. And at this moment, Beth, without really feeling too much, she, her, her real father, she was raised by her stepfather, but her real father literally had a family in Kentucky and a family in Indiana. And so at this moment, Beth is thinking, wait, what? And then she, and she goes, what's your husband's name? Oh, his name is Tommy. And Beth is like, my husband's name is Tom <laughs> for a split second. And when I told Tommy Walker this story, he, he didn't hear it. I guess Robin never told him when, when <laughs> I was in trouble for a minute. Yeah. When, <laughs> and I wasn't even there. I was over rehearsing with my band and Tommy was rehearsing with his band and we're completely oblivious of this conversation. And, <laughs> And it all just kind of unfolded slowly, like exactly how you would imagine it. And uh, when they found out, oh, yeah, Tommy Walker. And Beth was like, well, I know who Tommy Walker is. And, she, and, then, and then she said, oh, my husband's Tom Straley. And she goes, oh, I know who Tom Straley is. So it was like, it was like at that moment they figured it out. But it was like, holy cow. And Beth and Robin became pretty good friends at that. Yeah, hit the like if you get a chance. Um, uh, they became pretty fr good friends and would get together every now and then the kids would come over and go swimming and stuff like that. And then they had a little girl and we had a little girl. I think their daughter was named Emma, Emily or something. And our daughter was named Emma. And uh, anyway, it was pretty funny. Uh, uh, so that was, that's my story for the day. So uh, Diane is not here. She's going to have to watch it later. I'm going to log off because I'm going to take Jim. I got to go get some In-N-Out Burger for me and for Jim. I'm feeling a little peckish. So sorry about this. I'm so sorry we had these troubles. I'm bummed because our peak was probably in the low 30s. Um, so that's a drag. Hopefully this won't be the case tomorrow. Um, I'm tempted to do a like a stream earlier. I'll check my speed and everything like that. I'm not going to try. It looked like the speeds were like 9 or 10 once I got going. So we'll see. And I think it's been better. But I'm really concerned that it, this video will be buffering uh, at from the server, but I don't think it will do that. So Gary, thank you so much. Yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. If you think of it, hit the like button. Don't forget to uh, like my Facebook page if you're a face if you're on Facebook, because um, sometimes I post there and you can send me your photos of you holding your guitar, uh, your main guitar, electric or acoustic, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna do like a group uh, post at some point once I have a bunch of them. I think I only have three so far, so you can send those. Also, if you shop through the links of the Amazon links on any of the videos, uh, like there'll be links underneath in the info section. If you shop on those links, I, I get a percentage of your, your finance. So if you buy $100 worth of stuff, I get, you know, two, three, four, five bucks sometimes. Um, and that all adds up, believe it or not. It does add up to actual, some uh, decent real money. Uh, so that all, all comes in handy. You don't need to pay me here. You can, but you don't have to. I'm not asking for donations. Uh, YouTube does pay me, so I get money from this too. So uh, if you feel so inclined, you can feel free to go on forums and plug this channel. Um, it's not going to be my primary focus, I don't think, unless I start making insane money at doing it. Uh, and in that case, you'll start to see more graphics and things like that. <laughs> you might even see staff and better cameras and more angles and all that. But at this point, I'm trying to do everything with one camera, one, one sitting. And I do hope to do a video when I have some time. I've been so busy. I hope to do a video on, I'm going to do two videos, one uh, changing core, uh, changing, help changing chords for beginners and help changing chords for intermediate players. Um, I get a lot of requests for that. And we did some exercises the other day that I thought I might teach those. So uh, exercises with a musical usefulness. Okay. So let's talk and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I hope this works better tomorrow. God bless you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. I'll leave the chat up as always.